BMW 3 Series has ruled the compact part of the mid-sized executive segment for more than 40 years, and the company's hopes are high for this 7th generation version. It's smarter, slightly larger, more efficient and considerably higher tech. All the things you'd expect, really. Something else you'd expect from this model is rear-wheel drive handling purity. It doesn't disappoint in that regard either. Think of a really sharp handling, relatively compact sports saloon, and it's probable that you're thinking of this car, BMW's 3 Series. Over more than four decades, it's dominated the segment it first invented, and upwards of 15 million of them have been sold. So, of course, the company's hopes are high for this seventh generation version. The Munich maker certainly needs this contender to be good. The Bavarian mark used to advertise every car it made as being the ultimate driving machine. But that hasn't been a slogan appropriate to many of the SUV-inspired or electrified models the company's brought us in more recent times. And it's also been a difficult mantra to meet as the 3 Series has become larger and heavier over the last few years. It was time for a reset. The question is whether this G20 Series design is good enough to provide it. BMW was determined that it should be. A clever new suspension system with lift-related damping means that the luxury ride this car needs to deliver need not compromise the quest for the sharpest possible levels of handling. There are more responsive engines too. The strong selling diesels boosted by a switch from twin scroll turbos to sequential twin turbocharging that delivers extra mid-range engine punch. And the boast is that you can have your cake and eat it because all the power plants on offer are from the brand's latest Efficient Dynamics family and claim to offer class-leading cleanliness and frugality. That's something further aided by sleek aerodynamics and the lighter weight of the new CLAR platform that this contender borrows from BMW's larger models. Actually, in many respects, this is, these days, one of the brand's larger models. For years following its original launch in 1975, this car was the entry point to BMW's range. But ever since the 1 Series hatch slotted in below it back in 2004, the 3 Series has been on a growth spurt, gaining more in size in its last two generations than the previous four combined. Hence the needed change in descriptive terminology from compact to mid-sized executive saloon. Justified this time round by a rear cabin that at last on a 3 Series claims to be able to offer decently class competitive levels of passenger space. Wherever you're sitting in this car, the Munich maker claims it'll feel properly luxurious, something previously only possible on mainstream models if you spent a fortune on extra cost options. We're also promised safety upgrades, transmission improvements and key media system updates. In short, there's a lot to talk about. We'll be honest though, it's the rejuvenated driving dynamics that we're keenest to put to the test. For the first time in a very long time, this promises to be a BMW that really will return the brand to the values it started out with. And not before time. While it's true that it's hard to buy a bad modern car, it's also the case that so many models today are distinctly two-dimensional in the way that they drive. Search for the hidden depths of talent in some of them, and it won't take long to realize that it's just not there. The 3 Series has always been different. It impresses at first acquaintance, but it's also the sort of car that offers more the more you ask of it. You'll be pleased to learn that this part of its dynamic makeup hasn't changed in this seventh generation version. In fact, it's been further developed. Like all of the best driver's cars, it will flatter the inexpert user, yet has the depth of talent to reward the enthusiast. The basic formula here hasn't altered much. Front engine, rear wheel drive, and near perfect 50-50 weight distribution have defined the 3 Series to date, and this one doesn't deviate too far from that script. Although BMW has of late been doing rather well in this country with its growing lineup of X-Drive, 
all-wheel drive versions, but in its standard rear-driven guise that this car really seems to shine in comparison to its mid-sized executive segment rivals. Super effective traction and stability systems keep those back wheels in check so that if you're not a committed driving enthusiast, you probably wouldn't know which end of the car drive was coming from. But if you are, then the sensation of being pushed by the back wheels as you exit a bend never fails to offer up a great feeling of pleasure. So firmly has the 3 Series established rear wheel drive as a template for the ideal mid-sized executive model that key competitors, namely Mercedes C-Class, Jaguar's XE and the Alfa Romeo Giulia have had to follow suit. In fact, Audi's A4 is the only significant contender in this sector, sticking with the kind of front wheel drive layout that, if you think about it, we take for granted with virtually every other affordable car on the market. And even Audi these days engineers its Quattro four wheel drive system with a rear wheel drive bias. The classic ingredients of this car, in other words, have been copied and copied again. So BMW has had to sweat the details in order to keep ahead. And Munich has certainly done that. The company's engineers were given permission to add more of a sporting edge to this G20 series version and were aided in that quest by this Mark 7 model line's adoption of the aluminium-rich cluster architecture platform these days used by the brand's larger models. This has provided a platform that's 25% stiffer and been a major contributor to weight savings over the previous F30 series model of up to 55 kilos. From this optimum starting point, the development team then added in wider axle tracks, more axle camber and stiffer springs and suspension mountings. You might quite understandably think that all of this hardly seems the ideal recipe for the kind of supple, luxurious ride that a car of this kind must also deliver. This 3 Series model's calling card, though, is the way that it's always been able to combine a setup for Silverstone with something that works equally well on the North Circular. And here again, a significant step forward has been taken. Special so-called lift-related dampers are fitted to all models. Clever shock absorbers, incorporating structures that provide extra damping at the extremes of wheel travel. These allow BMW to adopt quite a firm sporting setup, but also one able to deliver a fluent ride over tarmac imperfections. That's even true of an M Sport trimmed model like this one, which comes with a 10mm ride height reduction. You're going to want to know about the engine range. It might look much the same as what was on offer with final versions of the previous F30 series model, but BMW insists that it isn't, especially when it comes to the volume 2 litre units that almost all 3 Series customers choose. The most popular four-cylinder diesels gain sequential twin turbocharging for extra mid-range punch. The increasingly important four-cylinder petrol power plants are lighter and gain higher injection pressures. And the eight-speed auto transmission setup that virtually all 3 Series models now use has been given a workover. If you're wondering about the availability of the kind of slick shifting manual box that was once a 3 Series signature feature, well, these days you can only have that with something from the four-cylinder diesel range. That kicks off with the 150 horsepower 318D. Even this variant gets you to 62 miles an hour from rest in just 8.4 seconds en route to 140 miles an hour. Most buyers, though, will continue to choose the 190 horsepower 320D mid-range diesel derivative we're trying today, which gives you more options. Order it in auto form and you get the more sophisticated paddle shift sport transmission with launch control, a setup that's standardized elsewhere in the range on all petrol powered and six cylinder three series models. If you do get your 320D in auto form, you'll also be offered the X-Drive four-wheel drive option we're trying here. With any 320D, you get the full benefit of that switch to sequential twin turbocharging, a really lovely sweep of pulling power propelling you urgently through the mid-range as the little turbos dance in unison. The largely irrelevant straight line stats are good by class standards too. 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.1 seconds in a rear-driven model en route to 149 miles an hour. 
Are we really saying that diesel's dead when a car like this can do all that, yet still realistically return over 50 miles per gallon on a regular basis? As usual with BMW, there's a six-cylinder diesel option too, a 265 horsepower 330D variant also offered with the option of xDrive and available in rear-driven form to improve the 62 mile an hour sprint stat to 5.5 seconds. If petrol power is more what you had in mind, you'll find that even the base 320i accelerates with plenty of vigour, offering 184 horsepower and cresting 62 miles an hour in just 7.1 seconds en route to 149 miles an hour. And this variant can be had in rear-driven or X-Drive forms. The same 2.0-litre engine also features in the rear-driven 330e plug-in hybrid variant, aligned to an electric motor, incorporating an extra boost function. This could increase power to as much as 293 horsepower, reducing the 62 mile an hour sprint time to exactly six seconds. The hybrid system's extra weight drops maximum speed slightly to 143 miles an hour, but more significantly, the battery pack it now uses virtually doubles the all electric driving range that was offered in the previous generation 330e model. Now it's claimed to be as much as 37 miles. This 2-litre petrol engine gets a third outing in the rear-driven 330i variant, in which form its output is up to a brawny 258 horsepower, good enough to allow this version to dispatch the 62 mile an hour sprint in just 5.8 seconds en route to 155 miles an hour. For some 3 Series buyers though, only the distinctive whale of a straight 6 petrol power plant will do. If that's you, then before you rush to put your name down for the new all-wheel drive version of the iconic M3, which can now put out as much as 510 horsepower, spare a thought for the considerably more affordable M340i model. Like the M3, it also gets X-Drive four-wheel drive and uses much the same 3-litre straight-six engine, but in a 374 horsepower state of tune. Though that's still good enough to propel you to 62 miles an hour in just four and a half seconds on the way to a top speed that has to be artificially limited to 155 miles an hour. Also like the M3, the M340i gets a standard fit M Sport differential, the same limited slip diff that you'll find offered as an option on the 330i and the 330d models. This is a box worth ticking should you value the way this feature can proactively distribute drive torque evenly to both rear wheels and compensate for the rotational speed difference between the inner and outer wheel as you power through each bend. Even without this kind of tech, you'll find that a volume four-cylinder model like this one will tackle the turns with infectious enthusiasm. All modern sports saloons feature torque vectoring systems of some kind these days, using electronic traction systems to vary drive torque between the driven wheels. But the BMW performance control setup is particularly effective. Or perhaps it just seems that way because you're always so clued into what's going on beneath this car's wheels. Reaction to this G20 series model steering hasn't actually been universally positive, but we've certainly no issue with it. Unless, rather unrealistically, you expect this electrically assisted setup to have the kind of feel you'd have enjoyed in the long forgotten days of hydraulic racks, you'll probably conclude, as we did, that the steering feedback on offer here is probably as good as you're going to get in a car of this kind. Steering is, of course, one of the things you can change using the drive mode system that you'd expect to find on a car in this segment. The sort of setup that will also alter throttle response and auto gear change timings based on the way you want to drive. It'll influence ride quality too if you've paid extra for adaptive damping. On a four-cylinder model with standard suspension, the so-called driving experience package in question will offer you three selectable settings, Comfort, Eco Pro and Sport. And if you're in an M Sport model, viewing the TFT instrument control display through the chunky M Sport wheel, you'll find that the screen's graphics and colours will change as you swap between the options. Sport and Eco Pro have additional individual settings that allow you to set your own particular parameters and you'll get an extra adaptive option if you've got adaptive damping which will constantly tweak ride quality to suit the way you're driving. We should also mention that on six cylinder petrol models there's also an even more focused top Sport Plus setting too. 
what all this boils down to is that the battle lines between this car and its closest Mercedes and Audi rivals, which had become somewhat indistinct, are now clear again once more. This G20 3 Series model has restored the clear blue sky that used to exist between this model line and its closest C-Class and A4 competitors in terms of dynamic drive response. And at the same time, it's caught up to those cars when it comes to things that were slightly lacking in the previous F30 generation 3 Series model, principally in the areas of ride comfort, safety standards and cabin technology. Refinements much improved too. You might not think that in a four-cylinder diesel model at start-up, but once on the move, this car really is very quiet indeed. In short, it's quite an achievement. The G20 name may more usually be applied to an international forum for government, but here that tag designates a benchmark in sports saloon prowess. We await a response from Audi, Mercedes, Jaguar and Alfa Romeo with renewed interest. The proportions of this seventh generation model have been radically revised and the styling details have certainly evolved. But it all sits within a three series styling theme that by now should be familiar to almost every business buyer. Classic cues like the kidney grille at the front, the sharp lines of the flanks and the powerful rear end are all present and correct. So too the distinctively sculpted long bonnet and set back passenger compartment which combine with short front and rear overhangs and a long wheelbase to create the kind of dynamic proportions you'd expect from a BMW. W. In their own way, all these things are as much a hallmark of this Munich model as its famed perfect 50-50 weight distribution. As we've just suggested though, the size of the package it all sits in is now significantly different. The F30 series model this car replaced was quite a lot bigger than its predecessor and this G20 series 7th generation design is larger still, 85mm longer and 16mm wider. No longer a compact executive saloon, it's now as tall and wide as the original 7 series was 40 years ago. Partly this is because of the increasing size of the 1 series hatch that has given this 3 series model license to grow. Partly it's because BMW wants to match the growing size of its most direct Audi A4 and Mercedes C-Class competitors in this segment. Partly it's due to the requirements of pedestrian impact legislation. And partly it's because this car's most important market, China, wants its cars to be bigger. The Chinese also favour styling that's slightly more extrovert, which is possibly why the subtler front-end looks of previous 3 Series models have given way to a no-section now dominated by a larger and much more imposing take on this car's familiar broad-framed kidney grille. You may think it adds a useful extra degree of overtaking presence, or you might feel that there's just a hint of Mr Potato Head's moustache here being more overt inevitably divides opinion. Four chiselled contour lines flow down the aluminium bonnet into this feature and menacing full LED headlamps now flank it. This model line's usual twin light arrangement here emphasised by a notch in the front apron that rises into the headlamp contour. The brand's latest laser light technology is optional. This lower bumper section differs quite a lot with trim selection with M Sport spec as here horizontal LED fog lamps and the air curtain slits sit in black corner cutouts, either side of a meshed three-part lower intake. Lower trim levels get a less aggressive lower section flanked by T-shaped fog lamp panels. If you're familiar with previous generation versions of this car, then in profile you'll better appreciate the size enhancement we were just talking about. That 41mm wheelbase increase is perhaps most evident in the extra length between the front wheel and the front door, while further back compared to the old F30 series car, the D-pillar appears thinner and the rear three-quarter glass much larger. A mid-level character line flows from the front wheel arch over the rear door handles to the rear haunches, just above which, as usual on a 3 Series, there's the brand's signature Hofmeister Kink, a familiar counter swing at the trailing edge of the side window graphic. 
A lower contour line near the side skirts guides the eye to sculpted arches, housing rims between 17 and 19 inches in size. We've got 19-inch double-spoke M wheels on this saloon model, complete with the optional blue calipers of BMW's uprated M Sport braking system. The Touring Estate version, incidentally, shares the exact same length and width dimensions as this saloon, but has a roof line that's five millimeters higher. There's a cleaner, more modern look at the back too. Surface contours lead into the rear apron from the side skirts and extend in an upward movement towards slim LED tail lamps now featuring darkened lenses. Is there just a hint of Lexus IS here? You decide. With all models, the trailing edge of the boot lid forms a subtle spoiler, but in this case, as you can see, it's been embellished a little, as will be the lower area of the bumper if you've opted for an M Sport model like this one. Here, the twin exhausts, which now feature on all variants, are emphasised like gun barrels with surrounding cool grey mouldings. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. This car having been switched onto the same kind of CLAR or cluster architecture platform that undergirds the brand's larger models. Hence, a 25% stiffer structure that now incorporates more aluminium and contributes hugely to the 55 kilo weight reduction that this G20 series model enjoys over its F30 series predecessor. Time to take a look inside, but before we do, a word about keys. A little disappointingly, you can't specify the kind of integrated screen display key you get on the brand's larger models, but Android users do now get the chance to specify this car in such a way that it will allow them to unlock it using their phone handsets. The Munich maker boasts about how difficult this digital key package's incorporated NFC chip is to hack, and has thought too about extra safeguards for this standard key. A movement sensor is now included within the fob to stop it from transmitting when it isn't being carried, so considerably reducing the risk of its signal being picked up by receiving devices. OK, let's take a seat up front. For the first time in a 3 Series, you're guaranteed the feel of a proper luxury car, even in the lower echelons of the range, surrounded as you are by widescreen, chrome-garnished, expensively elegant cabin architecture. You'll quickly be struck by the sheer depth of quality on offer here. All the materials used, even those lower down, are great to look at and touch, with classy stitching, thin ambient lighting colour strips, and smart metal finishing that feels richer and upmarket, but not so much that the interior might be in danger of assuming a slightly gaudy ambience. It's certainly a cabin worthy of a comparison with that of a C-Class or an A4, and it simply leagues ahead of the kind of thing you'd get in a Jaguar XE or an Alfa Romeo Giulia. The redesigned seats will be upholstered with this supple Vanaska leather, unless you opt for base SE spec trim, and they position you slightly lower than you would be in some rivals. Another thing that helps in delivering this car's slightly sportier demeanour. The media features will obviously be quite a talking point, though the amount of technology you get depends quite a lot on your chosen level of trim. Here we've got the live cockpit professional package that only comes with M Sport or full M trimmed variants, which gets you a 12.3 inch virtual instrument binnacle screen and a 10.25 inch centre dash iDrive monitor. SE or sport spec derivatives make do with the brand's ordinary live cockpit plus package, which offers an 8.8 inch iDrive display at the top of the centre stack and a 5.7 inch screen between conventional old fashioned analog dials in the instrument cluster. In some ways, though, less, maybe more here. With the fully digitalised instrument binnacle screen of this professional package, the virtual speedometer and rev counter gauges that symmetrically frame the display use opposite swinging needles that can be visually confusing. Using. And though you get sat-nav mapping in the centre of the screen, you can't expand the 3D navigation layout to completely fill it, as is possible with, say, Audi's virtual cockpit layout. It's nice to have the bigger 10.25-inch centre stat monitor, though, which better showcases the fact that BMW has matched and in some cases exceeded the current media connectivity class standard here. This more advanced infotainment package includes what the brand calls an intelligent personal assistant, 
This is a supposed fount of all knowledge that responds to voiced questions prefaced by, hey, BMW, such as the Alexa system would, Siri on an Apple phone, or the Google Assistant feature on an Android handset. BMW insists that the setup is rather cleverer than those ones. You can give it a name if you think it'll help you bond with it better. And the press kit tells us we can even ask it the meaning of life. It's more likely, of course, that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just that little bit easier. If you tell it you're cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, it'll trot out explanatory text from the online handbook. Or you might want it to check your oil level, look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your messages. If, understandably, you feel you could quite happily live without the larger central screen and the dubious benefits of having an intelligent personal assistant on board with you, you'll be quite happy with the media functions delivered up by the more ordinary Live Cockpit Plus packages, smaller 8.8-inch iDrive display. If you're graduating on from the previous F30 Generation 3 Series model, you'll be pleased to find that both the lower rotary controller and the screen surface are now touch sensitive. And with both screen sizes, the layout is clear and logical. A sidebar menu giving you media, communication, navigation, car and apps options that are also duplicated by buttons next to the iDrive controller. These shortcut options connect you into features like the DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity, connected sat-nav and Apple CarPlay, smartphone mirroring, all of its standard fare. There's an awful lot of connected drive digital stuff too. A wide range of BMW vehicle apps, for instance, that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts. And a concierge service that connects you through to an operator to help with journeying info. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software and there's also what BMW calls an open mobility cloud that, via a clever BMW Connected Plus app, can allow you to interact with the car when you're not in it, for instance, allowing you to remotely view it in 3D. There are caveats here, though. We just mentioned Apple CarPlay. Well, that system's only supported for a year before you've got to pay an annual subscription for it. Android Auto isn't offered at all. Many of the digital services are also life-limited before becoming chargeable, some for three years, and others, like online connected music, which gives you access to the Deezer and Napster premium services, and Microsoft Office 365, which syncs in your emails and your calendar for just three months. To some extent, you can't help feeling that it's a case of the Munich maker giving with one hand and taking away with the other. Are there other issues? Well, not many. We don't think it's acceptable to have to pay extra for lumbar support on a car of this price. And as in a C-Class and an A4, you might object to the fact that the pedals are offset quite a bit to the right. Over-the-shoulder view is also slightly restricted on this saloon model, thanks to wide rear pillars and a boot lid with a leading edge that's difficult to see. Though this issue is somewhat mitigated by the standard inclusion across the range, not only of all-round parking sensors, but also of a rear-view camera and a parking assistant that will automatically identify spaces and steer you into them. This well-specified test car has much more, of course. M Sport trim gets you this lovely M steering wheel, and if you've extra to spend, you'll want features like the glass sunroof and the head-up display we've got here, both now much larger than before. There's even a selectable caring car feature on the centre infotainment screen that uses music, lighting and the climate control in a three-minute long session that will either vitalise or relax you. Yes, it's a gimmick. Yes, you'll be pleased to have it after the kind of long day at the office that made it possible for you to run a new 3 Series in the first place. When it comes to cabin practicality, BMW achieves the required class standard, but no more. Both the door bins and the glove box are compartmentalised and averagely sized. This lidded area at the base of the centre stack reveals a couple of cup holders, along with a 12-volt port and a USB point. Plus, there's a wireless phone charging mat if you've specified one. Another USB point can be found in this lidded box between the seats. An overhead sunglasses compartment is missing, but you get a flock-lined cubby by the driver's right knee and ticket clips on the sun visors. 
Okay, time to take a seat in the rear. Now, the door aperture height has been increased, especially on the Touring Estate model, which will help parents getting things like child seats in and out. Given that this G20 Generation 3 Series model is now over 4.7 metres in length for the first time, and is pretty much as big as a 5 Series saloon from the turn of the century, you'd expect things to have improved quite a lot back here, particularly as this BMW now has a slightly longer wheelbase than its Audi and Mercedes rivals. Inside, sure enough, there's certainly more room to stretch out than was the case with the previous F30 Generation 3 Series model, the distance between the front and rear seats having been extended by 11 millimetres. There's slightly more headroom than before, too, and BMW says that this cabin's now wide enough to take three child seats side by side, though only the two outside positions come with ISOFIX attachment points. That may be true, but a rival Audi A4 model can still slightly more easily accommodate three folk here at the back, thanks to its lower transmission tunnel and 13 millimetres of extra body width. Both cars, though, like a comparable C-Class, Alfa Giulia or Jaguar XE, are way less spacious back here than would be a non-premium brand contender in this segment, say a Ford Mondeo, a Volkswagen Passat or a Skoda Superb. You pay for badge equity, and not only in terms of sticker price. Some of those models will also give you the extra B-pillar mounted vents that are lacking here, but this BMW compensates by standard a three-zone climate control system that allows rear seat folks to individually set their own temperature using the central display below these twin vents. If there are only two of you back here, you'll be able to use this central armrest with its lidded twin cup holders. Plus, you're favoured with seat back pockets, a 12-volt port, twin USB sockets, overhead reading lights, and decently sized door pockets incorporating bottle holders. BMW makes a long wheelbase version of this car for the Chinese market, and if that variant was available here, it really would be hard to find reasons to graduate from one of these to a much pricier 5 Series. You certainly get the kind of premium luxury feel you'd expect from the class above, particularly in a highly specified variant like this one, with classy stitched door card finishing and smart blue M flashing on the seat belts. Finally, Let's take a look out back. Now, on a saloon variant like this one, a powered boot lid comes as part of the extra cost comfort package, but an electric tailgate is standard on the Touring Estate version. Both include a hands-free opening feature. The revealed trunk space on this sedan is the same size as it was before, 480 litres. That's the same as you'd get in an Audi A4 and an Alfa Romeo Giulia, but 25 litres more than you'd get from a Mercedes C-Class or Jaguar XE. The Touring Estate version serves up 500 litres, which is 5 litres more than the previous generation model, thanks to a 112mm increase in cargo area width. That station wagon now has a rear window that opens separately too, so smaller items are easier to load. In this saloon, the boot area is usefully square and deep, though it can't offer you any further space beneath the floor. There are deep netted areas to the left and right, and a 12-volt socket features too. The painted metal and exposed wiring of the boot's roof doesn't feel very premium, but in this area, you do get useful catches for retracting the standard split-folding backrest. It segments in a 40-20-40 fashion, so that long items like skis can be pushed through without disturbing a couple of rear seated occupants. When the seats are completely folded in this saloon, you don't get a very flat loading area, but things are much better in the Touring variant, which, with everything flat, can offer you up to 1,500 litres of carriage space. When you pause to consider that one product line, the 3 Series Saloon and Touring range, accounts for more than a fifth of BMW's global sales, you begin to appreciate quite how much there is riding on this model. So the pricing for this car absolutely has to be right. And from launch for this saloon variant, the sticker figures kicked off from around £32,500, a sum sufficient to see you in either the 320i petrol model with 184 horsepower or the 318d diesel with 150 horsepower. 
The other volume 3 series variant, the 190 horsepower 320D diesel, which is what we've got here, was priced from launch from just under £34,000. Bear in mind that the 318D and the 320D derivatives are the only ones in the range that can be had with manual transmission. On the 318D, an ordinary auto gearbox is £1,550 more. On the 320D, if you want a self-shifter, you have to have sport automatic transmission, which costs £1,690 more. All the petrol variants and all six-cylinder models get that sport auto box as standard. This set up offering faster shift timings and gear change paddles. As usual, with the 3 Series model line, there's the option across the range of a touring estate variant for a premium that you can expect to be in the region of around £1,500. The 320i and the 320d are two of the variants in the range that get the option of xDrive four-wheel drive, which has to be paired with auto transmission and comes at a premium over a rear-driven auto model of just over £1,500, which makes it worth considering for a rural owner. Most buyers will stick with a conventional rear-driven 320d, but before signing up for one, we suggest you might also like to consider the potential tax merits of the brand's 330e plug-in hybrid variant. This derivative combines a 2-litre petrol engine with an electric motor to create a combined output of 248 horsepower and despite a hefty price premium over the 320D, now around £4,000, managed to account for up to a third of all sales of the previous F30 generation 3 series model, a trend the brand expects to continue. On all four of these core derivatives, 318D, 320D, 320i and 330e, trim levels are based around the usual SE, Sport and M Sport grades. A minority of 3 Series buyers will want something more powerful. If so, you'll be pointed first to either the 330i or the 330d, both models offered only with either Sport or M Sport trim. The rear-driven 330i petrol model was priced from around £38,000 at launch and uses the brand's usual 2-litre four-cylinder turbo unit, but in an uprated 258 horsepower state of tune. The 330d diesel cost from around £40,000 at launch and has a twin turbo six cylinder unit putting out 265 horsepower and comes in either rear driven or x drive forms the latter costing 1500 pounds more not enough no problem if you can afford to spend even more bmw's motorsport division has created some temptingly powerful petrol options for you both use the latest version of the brand's three liter twin turbo straight six and come only with the x drive system and full m series trim if you need to keep your spend below £50,000, pick the 374 horsepower M340i. If you can afford to progress beyond that price, then nothing but the full fat M3 model will do. A car that's all wheel driven for the very first time and a model that in its most powerful form will put out 510 horsepower. Enough on 3 Series range semantics, let's try and position this car for you within BMW's model lineup. That's not too easy because there are lots of alternatives. Now let's start with these straightforward ones. You're looking at a premium of between £4,000 to £6,000 to graduate from 1 Series hatch to a 3 Series saloon with the same powertrain. The difference varying depending on the version you're looking at. And a 3 Series model sits about £4,000 below the larger 5 Series saloon in the Bavarian Makers model lineup. If you don't mind the idea of a hatch, your BMW showroom options widen. Much of the same kind of engineering you get in this 3 could be yours in an X1 SUV for a couple of thousand less. Or if you're looking for five doors in something that isn't from the crossover class, an equivalent version of the brand's 4 Series Grand Coupe could be yours for a couple of thousand more than a 3. At the time of this test in the summer of 2019, the Bavarian maker was also still selling the 5-door Gran Turismo version of the previous 6th generation 3 Series model for around the same money being asked for this new 7th generation saloon. 
And of course, you could additionally consider the car that was once based directly on a 3 Series, but which has now been moved up market from it, the X3 SUV, though that's now been price positioned six to seven thousand pounds above this G20 generation 3 Series design. Okay, let's assume that a saloon or a touring estate version of this seventh generation 3 Series is exactly what you want. And if that's the case, you're going to want to understand how its value proposition stacks up against competing premium badge mid-size models from other brands. Now, if you're one of those people who initially looked at the price list of this car with a bit of a sharp intake of breath, you might be interested to know that it's actually been priced fractionally below equivalent versions of its two most direct rivals, the Mercedes C-Class and the Audi A4. And interestingly, also fractionally below the two cars that aspire most notably to that status in this segment, Alfa Romeo's Giulia and Jaguar's XE. If you're looking at a Lexus IS 300h self-charging petrol electric hybrid as another possible alternative to a conventionally engined petrol or a diesel 3 series, well, that won't save you very much either. Once you've taken that into account and then considered this BMW's class-leading handling and segment-leading fuel and CO2 stats, you might quite understandably conclude that your money ought to be headed Munich's way. Before making a final decision, though, you're going to need to know exactly how generous the Bavarian brand has been with standard equipment. So let's take a look at that now. Now, we've been reviewing 3 Series models long enough to remember back to when you didn't even get a radio in base versions of this car. Now, these days, of course, things are very different. In G20 Series form, even base SE trim gets you plenty of kit that previously you'd have had to pay extra for on a 3 Series. Things like adaptive full LED headlamps, a parking assistant that automatically steers you into spaces, a reversing camera, acoustic side glass, and three-zone air conditioning that allows rear passengers to set their own climate. BMW has even standardised its lovely welcome light carpet that illuminates the ground around the front doors when you get into the car or step out of it at night. In addition, pretty much all the stuff you'd expect from a mid-sized premium executive model is present and correct too. So, tick off alloy wheels, 17 inches on base SE models, along with front and rear park distance control parking sensors, auto headlamps and wipers, power folding heated mirrors and alarm and LED illumination for the tail lamps and front fog lights. Inside, buyers get a leather stitched sport multifunction steering wheel, cruise control and an anti-dazzle rear view mirror. Plus, a premium sports saloon has long had to have some kind of driving mode system that enables you to tweak steering and throttle response to your mood. Hence, BMW's driving experience set up with its comfort, Eco Pro and sport settings. Annoyingly, a space saver spare wheel is only optional, but you do get run flat tyres as standard if you can stretch beyond the base SE level of trim. Well, you'll want to know about infotainment too. All three series models come with the latest seventh generation version of BMW's iDrive system that in standard form comes with an 8.8 inch centre dash screen and duplicates many of its functions onto a 5.7 inch instrument cluster display. This is the company's live cockpit plus package and it includes more than you might think, not only navigation and a decent quality six speaker 100 watt DAB stereo but also voice control and two USB ports for data transfer plus a lower touch controller upon which you can trace commands with your finger. In addition as you'd expect there's Bluetooth phone pairing too which reminds us that BMW has at last included Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring on a 3 series model though annoyingly it's only free for the first year access to the Android Auto system is still missing. As brand loyalists would expect, this modern era 3 Series model includes plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW connected drive services, things like tele-services, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it, and real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route. 
Plus. There's the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades. And of course, it will read out text messages to you. As standard, this 3 Series also has a concierge service that, at the press of a button, will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive. Bear in mind that some of these services are time limited before becoming chargeable. That's certainly the case with the connected teaser package, which gives you the Microsoft Office 365 feature that syncs in your emails and your calendar. That's only free for the first three months of ownership. If you've owned a BMW before, you might be familiar with the standard remote services package that allows you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. And you'll maybe also recognise the downloadable BMW Connected Plus app, which can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar and even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently travelled routes and memorise them as future destinations. Plus, the app will help you to find your car if you've forgotten where you parked it and can remotely lock or unlock the doors. If your 3 Series budget must stay within reasonable bounds, but you want a slightly sportier look and feel, your dealer will suggest you find the £1,400 premium necessary to get mid-level sport trim. The extra cash gets you larger 18-inch alloy wheels, run-flat tyres, high-gloss finishing for the bumpers and shadow line exterior trim, aluminium door sill finishers, front heated sports seats and Vernasca leather upholstery. On a 318D or a 320D model, Sport Trim also gets the convenience of the slightly larger 59 litre fuel tank that's fitted as standard to all other 3 Series variants. If budget permits though, you'll probably want to stretch up to the properly dynamic M Sport spec that the majority of 3 Series customers end up choosing. It's what we've got here. Is it worth upgrading to that? Well, it's certainly tempting. The extra cash, £2,900 over base SE trim, gets you bicolour, orbit grey, M double spoke, 18 inch alloy wheels, and a subtle M aerodynamic body styling kit with high gloss shadow line exterior trim. Plus, driving dynamics are improved courtesy of firmer M Sport suspension that lowers the car by 10 millimetres. The most important benefits of the M Sport upgrade, though, are felt inside, where there's an anthracite headliner and the thick M Sport steering wheel that BMW folks seem to like so much. More significantly, M Sport trim allows the ordinary Live Cockpit Plus package to be replaced by BMW's altogether more sophisticated Professional Cockpit Plus arrangement. That gives you a much larger 10.25 inch centre dash screen and a further even bigger 12.3 inch control display to replace conventional dials in the instrument cluster. Now you'd expect this extra tech to be able to do more and sure enough it can, primarily through what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant, which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems you might use on your phone and is there to answer questions you can voice to the car as you drive it. In addition, the connected teaser three-month trial package we mentioned earlier gains the addition of the Munich Maker's online connected music system, which gives you access to the Deezer and Napster premium streaming services. As for options, well, we're hugely relieved, as you might be, that BMW has chosen to simplify the lengthy extras list that's normally attached to the models it sells here. With this seventh generation model, there are six main packages and just ten single options. Some of the packages are trim specific, like the SE Plus package. You'll be offered with baseline SE trim if you want your 3 Series to come with heated front seats, the larger 59 litre fuel tank and SensorTech man-made leather upholstery. At the other end of the range, an M Sport model like this one can be ordered with the extra cost M Sport Plus package that's been fitted 
can hear that gets you the biggest available wheels. These cool 19-inch M double-spoke bicolor jet black rims, through the spokes of which you glimpse the blue calipers of an uprated M Sport braking system. And there's also adaptive M suspension that allows you to alter ride quality via the various driving experience drive settings, along with extra high-gloss shadow line exterior trim with black framing for the front kidney grille, plus sun protection glass, an M rear spoiler and striped M seat belts. If you're buying either a 330i or a 330d derivative, the M Sport Plus package will also come with an M Sport differential, that being the only way to get that feature on this car. It's the first time that a limited slip diff has been offered on a 3 Series and it'll make a big difference to the way that you'll be able to get traction down through the bends when you're really going for it. On to packages that apply to all trim levels across the range. Now we'll start with the three we've got here. The popular comfort package gives you steering wheel heating and extended storage that includes an additional front seat stowage area, an extra 12 volt socket and nets for the boot and the front seat backs. There's also comfort access, keyless entry and a powered boot lid for the saloon, plus the opportunity for the boot lid and the tailgate on the touring model to be operated by a wave of your foot beneath the bumper, which will be useful for those times when you're approaching the car, key in pocket, laden down with bags. You might also want to consider the premium package, which gives you powered adjustment and lumbar support for the front seats, plus an electric glass sunroof increased in size for this G20 series model by 100 millimeters. If budget permitted, we'd also want the technology package, which includes BMW's now larger and more informative head-up display, enhanced Bluetooth connectivity with a wireless charging mat, Wi-Fi hotspots, preparation, and an audio upgrade that gives you the BMW Advanced loudspeaker system. Order an M Sport model with the technology package, and you also get Harman Kardon speakers and gesture control, which allows you to activate some of the central screen functions with a wave of your hand, a system we found hard to master. There's also a visibility package, which gives you BMW sophisticated laser light headlamps. These feature a high beam assistant, a selective beam and a non-dazzling high beam that extends to over 500 meters, almost double the range of the standard full LED headlights. On to individual options. Now, some of the package features we've mentioned can be ordered separately. Things like extended storage, front seat lumbar support, steering wheel heating, sun protection glass, the loudspeaker audio upgrade, Wi-Fi preparation and the wireless charging mat. Bear in mind too, the transmission caveats we mentioned earlier, that on a 318D and a 320D, you have to pay extra for an auto gearbox. Remember that a space saver spare wheel costs extra across the range, and you can't have it at all on the 330E plug-in hybrid variant. Remember too that the run flat tyres that are standardised on most models cost extra with base SE trim and that the split folding rear seats that are standard across the range cost extra on that 330E plug-in hybrid variant. A tow bar is of course optional on all models and you'd be wise to pay extra for BMW's Trackstar vehicle tracking system. If you struggle with parking, the Parking Assistant Plus option adds in a 3D surround view camera system. On M Sport models, you can also specify a selectable caring car feature on the center infotainment screen that uses music, lighting and the climate control in a three minute long session that will either vitalize you or Relax. As for aesthetics, well, bear in mind that unless you want your 3 Series painted in solid alpine white or jet black, the only standard colours, you'll be paying your dealer more for one of the available metallic colours. A new shade, Portimao Blue Metallic, has been introduced for M Sport models in the G20 Series range, but here we've got this rather lovely sunset orange finish. An 18-inch wheel upgrade on an SE model or a 19-inch wheel upgrade on a Sport or M Sport model might well complete the kind of look you'd ideally want. You could also add various BMW M performance body features, a front splitter, a rear diffuser or a rear spoiler, all of these available in either matte black or carbon, 
As for the interior, well, depending on the trim level you've selected, you can pay extra for alternative trim inlays, either aluminium mesh, fine wood ash, grey, brown, high gloss, or fine wood oak grain open port. And you can get the instrument panel coated in stitched Sansatec man-made leather too. You might also want to know that the Vernasca leather upholstery, which, just to remind you, is standard, providing you avoid base SE trim, comes in a choice of four colours with special decorative quilting and seam patterns, which vary according to the model line. We'll finish with a few practical touches. Now, you might well want the BMW roof rack system with its roof crossbars. And once they've been specified, you'll also be able to fit the classy looking BMW roof box. This is finished in black with titanium side panels, can be opened from both sides, features triple central locking and can hold up to 420 litres. We'd also want to consider the all-weather floor mats to protect the interior and the anti-slip water-resistant mat you can specify to protect the floor of the boot. As a final touch, what about a dash cam camera? Not the cheap add-on from Halfords, but a proper BMW Advanced Car Eye system, a highly sensitive, branded, full HD camera that fits in neatly at the top of the windscreen. On to safety, which is, as you'd expect from BMW, well accounted for, hence this car's full house, five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. You'd expect the basics, twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus front and rear ISOFIX child seat fastenings, and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. Primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC cornering brake control and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. And a performance control torque vectoring system that improves agility by varying the drive torque through the rear wheels depending on conditions. We should also mention that all variants get what BMW calls an Active Guard Plus system based around front collision warning technology. At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards, and if one is detected, you'll be warned and the brakes preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. Should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. Active Guard Plus also includes lane departure warning that stops dozy drivers from veering over lane delineating lines on the highway. Other neat safety features fitted as standard across the range include an alertness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness, a trailer stabilisation function that will stop trailer sway if you've a trailer fitted, and hill start assistant to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Best of all, we think, is the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery per personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get to you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. A potentially life-saving difference. The setup's now been further improved to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment. Immediately after the impact, flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. Want to go further? Well, a key option is what BMW calls its Driving Assistant Professional Pack, which gives you a whole range of extra camera-based safety features. These include nine key elements, and we'll talk you through them. First, there's active cruise control with approach control warning, which is able to tell you if you're getting too close to the car in front. Next, 
There's an automatic speed limit assist, which uses the car's camera-driven traffic sign recognition capability to automatically set the car's speed limiter to the prevailing speed limit. Crossing traffic warning, front, alerts you to oncoming vehicles if you're coming frontwards out of a parking space or trying to edge out of a junction and can't completely see traffic coming at you from either side. And crossroad warning is there to alert you to traffic coming at you from the sides of the crossroads. As the name suggests, wrong way warning makes a huge fuss if you forget yourself and end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. The other four driving assistant professional pack features are equally worth having. For highway use, there's a lane keeping assistant with active side collision protection and a steering and lane control assistant, both of which use light steering intervention to keep you where you should be on the road and away from other vehicles and together give this car a limited level of autonomous driving capability. Plus, there's also an evasion aid that gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Say, for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly have to make a dramatic lane change to avoid slow-moving traffic. Finally, we'd also mention that the Driving Assistant Professional Pack includes an emergency stop assistant. Should you suddenly become incapacitated while driving, say after a heart attack, this feature will allow the car to sense it. Having checked to see that you are indeed unresponsive, your BMW will then automatically slow itself, put on its hazard flashes and manoeuvre you gently to the side of the road. It's all very reassuring. For some reason, you don't expect a car with class-leading drive dynamics to be also class-leading in terms of running cost efficiency, but this one has to be. It's by far the most modern design in the premium mid-sized saloon segment and therefore needs an efficiency proposition strong enough to preserve a credible market share for BMW in this class when new generation versions of key rivals arrive in future with revitalized running cost readings. It'll be interesting to see if this G20 generation 3 Series has enough of a lead to sustain it in that regard. The business buyers who primarily populate this sector are notoriously unforgiving of cars that slip below standard in this area. You can love the way this Munich model carves its way through your favourite back doubles all you like, but if it doesn't stack up on the balance sheet, you're unlikely to get the nod from accounts that'll enable you to run one. Anyway, for the time being, it does. In CO2 terms, anyway, which for a company user is the most important factor. The 55 kilo weight saving that's been achieved this time round certainly helps here. Though it's worth pointing out that a rival fifth generation Audi A4, the design that's been on sale since 2016, remains around 45 kilos lighter still. For reference, the other key class rival, Mercedes C-Class, is typically around 60 kilos heavier than a comparable 3 Series. But of course, a good efficiency showing is about more than just light weight. The brand has also put a great deal of effort into aerodynamics, and given this G20 Series design, a redesigned active air flap system in the front grille, plus an almost completely sealed underbody to work with front air curtain slits that channel air more smoothly over the aerodynamically optimised wheels. The result is a big drag coefficient gain, which improves from the 0.26 CD figure of the previous F30 series model to 0.23 CD this time round. The adoption of sequential multi-stage turbocharging for the volume four-cylinder diesel engines has also had a significant effect. So let's start with the WLTP rated figures that BMW is quoting for those. As usual, we'll base these figures on the smallest possible wheel sizes available for each variant. So if you want to add in bigger rims, like the 19 inches we're trying here, be prepared for the figures to fall a few percentage points. As you might expect, the most frugal variant is the base diesel, the 318D, which in rare manual form manages up to 58.9 mpg on the combined cycle and an NEDC rated CO2 return of 113 grams per kilometer. The auto version buyers are more likely to want records up to 55.4 mpg and 109 grams per kilometer. 
You don't lose much though by stretching up to the next notch in the range and getting this engine in the 190 horsepower state of tune used in this 320D variant. In rear driven manual form, this manages a combined reading of up to 56.5 mpg and 115 grams per kilometer of CO2 or 55.4 mpg and 110 grams per kilometer as an auto. That equates to a benefit in kind rating of 31%. To give you some segment perspective, if you were to go for a direct comparable rival Audi A4, 40 TDI or Mercedes C220D, you do fractionally better with your fuel return but worse with your CO2 reading. The Audi manages 118 grams per kilometre while the Mercedes return is 121 grams per kilometre. A small advantage certainly but if it helps to justify the car you really want it's worth having. Buyers of this 320D opting for the X-Drive four-wheel drive package we're trying here don't suffer too much of an efficiency downside either. The figures falling only to 52.3 mpg and 119 grams per kilometre. That's due to the revised X-Drive setup's use of lighter components and a clever electro-hydraulic multi-plate clutch that's cut torque losses by 30%. Whichever 320D variant you choose, a touring range of just over 800 miles should be possible. For completion, we'll also give you the figures for the six-cylinder diesel variant, the 330D. This manages up to 47.9 mpg and 133 grams per kilometer in rear-driven form, or up to 45.6 mpg and 136 grams per kilometer in X-Drive guise. At this point, we'll also point out an annoying caveat. Most 3 Series models come with a decently sized 59 litre fuel tank, but on a 318D or a 320D variant, you might be irritated to find that you have to pay extra for this if you don't want to be stuck with a much smaller 39 litre tank. All 3 Series diesel derivatives use BMW's Blue Performance technology that includes a particulate filter, an oxidation catalyst, an NOx absorption catalyst and an SCR catalyst with AdBlue injection. You'll probably be familiar with AdBlue by now because most modern Euro 6 diesel power plants use it. It's a urea additive that mixes with the hot exhaust gases from the engine. As the urea combines with these fumes, it turns many of the harmful chemicals into nothing more noxious than water and nitrogen. And that's what makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere. Tell all that to barstool experts who talk as if diesel cars are alone responsible for smogging up our cities. These people will certainly point you to petrol power and given the current zeitgeist and government tax disincentives to fuel from the black pump, you'd certainly want to consider it if the running cost difference wasn't too great. Is that the case? Well, you decide. A rear-driven version of the base 320i petrol model manages up to 44.1 mpg on the combined WLTP cycle and up to 124 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2. That equates to a benefit in kind rating of 29%. For a 320i X-Drive variant, the figures fall to 42.2 mpg and 134 grams per kilometre. Switch to the rear-driven 330i with an uprated version of the same engine, and you're looking at up to 41.5 mpg and 134 grams per kilometre. For the six-cylinder M340i X-Drive model, it's up to 39.8 mpg, but the CO2 figure falls sharply to 162 grams per kilometre. If you really care about running cost efficiency in this car though, there's one variant you're particularly going to be drawn to, the 330e petrol plug-in hybrid. Despite the fact that this time around there isn't the government contribution towards the purchase price that helped to boost sales of earlier versions of the old F30 series 330e, BMW still reckons this derivative will be a strong seller. The installation of a more capable 12 kilowatt hour lithium iron high voltage battery has nearly doubled its potential electric driving range to as much as 37 miles and increased the all electric top speed potential to 68 miles an hour. As usual with plug in hybrids, the official combined cycle fuel figure, 138 miles per gallon, needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. But the important thing is that the government believes the quoted CO2 return, just 39 grams per kilometre, 10% better than before, which means a super low 
benefiting kind taxation rating of 16%, and well over 50 miles per gallon should be possible on long motorway runs. Whatever kind of 3 Series engine you choose, it'll benefit from the Munich Maker's various efficient dynamics technologies there to keep running costs in check. There's an engine auto start-stop system, as you would expect, and at highway speeds the cruise control can seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. Of course, the driver will also need to do their part. The figures we've just quoted assume that the car is being run in the driving experience drive mode system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. In this setting, the air conditioning and power steering only work when required to save energy. You'll want to keep an eye on how frugal your most recent journey's been. Now, a journey data part of the center dash infotainment screen's driving information section shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. The same section also has an energy flow graphic showing you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's a driving style analysis screen that when the Eco Pro mode is activated, rates your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. What else? Well, in the vehicle status section of the center dash screen, there's a general check control that allows you to monitor the status of various vehicle functions. Plus, there are separate screens that allow you to specifically oversee things like tire pressure and the current levels of engine oil and the AdBlue additive. You can check on service requirements too, and you can use a clever tele-services feature that comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services. You can also access through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment is due, your 3 Series can automatically put in a tele-services call to your nominated BMW service centre, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment, something you'll already have budgeted for if at the point of original purchase you opted for one of the two fixed cost service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages which cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. With these, after a one-off payment, which can be as little as around £400, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. What else might you need to know? Well, as long as you've spent less than £40,000 on your 3 Series, your VED tax will cost £140 a year. It would tax much of a journey into the options list, though, to get yourself a variant like this one costing well over that price, which would bring the VED demand up to a rather less palatable £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. Bear that in mind when adding in extras. Residual values? Well, independent experts reckon that 320D and 330i models will retain between 42 to 44% of their original value over a typical three-year ownership period. That's about three percentage points ahead of rival Audi A4 or Jaguar XE models. We'd expect most other mainstream 3 Series versions to follow suit. Onto the warranty package. Now, BMW's warranty only lasts for three years, but it includes an emergency breakdown service, and at least it isn't mileage limited, unlike the comparable package you'd get as standard with a rival Audi. You can, of course, extend the warranty with either monthly or annual payments. There's a three year paintwork warranty and the usual 12 year anti corrosion warranty. As for insurance groups, well, you're looking at Group 25 or 26 for a 318D, while for a 320D, it'd be between Groups 28 and 31, depending on the variant you choose. 330D ratings start at Group 28. As for petrol power, well, a 320i has ratings starting at either Group 29 or 30, while for a 330i, the ratings start from Group 32. At last, we're back to the kind of car that BMW is best at making. We understand why the company has to make SUVs, people carriers and electric vehicles, but it'll lose its soul if it ever stops making models like this one. The most recent previous generation 3 Series designs have dabbled with conformity, but this G20 version reasserts this Bavarian maker's dynamic dominance in the mid-sized sports saloon segment. No other rival serves up as deliciously rich a driving experience 
as this. There are a number of reasons why this seventh generation design has progressed once more in this regard. Lighter weight, sequential turbocharging, a stiffer structure, all of it helps. But we reckon the lift related dampers are a crucial contributor, delivering a balance of ride and handling that no competitor can match. And segment leading running cost efficiency adds the finishing touch to a classy package. Not that everything's perfect, of course. If all you care about is a cosseting ride, you might find the suspension of this BMW a little over firm, even if you pay extra for adaptive damping. Plus, we're disappointed that some of the MediaTek isn't offered on more accessible variants and that you have to pay extra for so many of the digital features once you've used them for a short period. Plus, of course, this model line has become considerably more expensive in recent years, though that's also true of obvious rivals. With this 3 Series, though, you feel you're getting a very complete benchmark standard product for that not inconsiderable outlay. You might rarely use the 